more wonderful than words can express is the story that the number 39 of Newcastle United tells. I am aware that some people find the number odd for a football player. However, 39 is unique for me, no, it's more than that. It has magic. I received everything in life from the number 39. That's how I arrived in Newcastle. In order to pursue my passion, it provided me with food, clothing, and three-hour bus rides. Was my father's taxi's Rio de Janeiro dispatch number. 39 is a special age for me, but it's more than that. It has magic. I received everything in life from the number 39. Bruce Guimarães. I live. It was easy at first. I was born into this world like most children in Brazil. I have been in love with the ball since I was five years old. We used to play flip-flop soccer every day in the street with Havaiana and Kenner flip-flops serving as our posts. We occasionally utilized stones or fruit that had fallen from the trees. Anything might be made to work by us. We played to win regardless of whether it was worth a Coca-Cola or a Tabana. The old, gorgeous Maracan with the yellow and green seats and the net we referred to as the Bridal Veil is where I was raised in Vila Isabel. We used to gather 20 of us from the neighborhood and visit anywhere because they used to let children under the age of 12 to enter for free. Vasco, Flamengo, Fluminense, and Botafogo. It made no difference who was performing. Just being there was fantastic for us. To us, the players were like gods. Even the reserve goalkeeper was divine. When my futsal team traveled to So Januario to play, I recall seeing the entire professional Vasco team in training. I went insane, dude. Naturally, I wasn't using a phone at the time. I wasn't even carrying any paper. For the love of God, please sign this for me, I begged the Vasco players as I walked to get a napkin from the hamburger stand. If you're the kit man, I couldn't care less. Brother, just sign the napkin. Though it's humorous today, I thought it was serious at the time. That soiled napkin was a holy item. My mother still has it in a secure location at her home. I had a dream that one day I would be one of those gods. But that's hilarious since my mom was opposed to it from the beginning. My father loved football, so when he suggested that I start playing futsal, my mother was all, no, no, no. He intends to become a swimmer. One more of you in the house is not acceptable. I'll die from it. She actually enrolled me in swimming lessons for approximately six months, but I didn't stop crying when I arrived home one day and said, Mom, this swimming? Seriously? I'm not involved in it at all. I apologize, but I have to play ball. Thanks to Bruno Guimaraes. I looked up to Ronaldinho. I actually began my career as a winger because I was so freaking tiny. I recall that we used to practice in the football hall on Saturdays starting at 8 in the morning. I would constantly beg my mother to purchase me more hamburgers from the stand, but she would always refuse. They had previously put a ton of food on credit there, and they couldn't pay until the end of the month, which I didn't find out about until much later. I used to get by on a Guara Vida and a ham and cheese most days. My mom was a motorbike mechanic. Of course, my father worked as a cab driver. This is a challenging existence in Brazil, particularly in Rio. You essentially work day and night. My dream, however, was sustained by that yellow taxi. I saw my father pretty much every Saturday when he came to watch me play football. I'll be honest, it made me anxious. My hero was my father. I didn't want to let him down. Additionally, he initially treated me harshly. He would occasionally even exclaim, I'm weary of watching you lose. Only if you triumph may you have an extra hamburger today. Football players don't often discuss this, but when I first started playing on a real team, I believed I was terrible. The night before a game, I used to become so agitated that I would start to feel sick to my stomach. Sometimes I couldn't sleep because I had a headache and a fever. Instead of playing freely while I played, I worried about making mistakes. I felt as though my heart was racing quicker than usual whenever I played a real game. It was a mental barrier. Then, at the age of 11, I participated in an impromptu game in the sports hall, thinking nobody was looking. I was a beast, of course, as I was having fun with my pals. My instructor, Mario Jorge, was watching from behind the bar with all the older guys, but I wasn't aware of it. 
Let me ask you a question, Bruno, he remarked as he entered the court after the game. Why don't you play this way in actual games? I replied, coach, I don't know. I don't feel at ease. It's challenging. Listen, don't worry about all that, he said. Just pretend to be having fun and watch what happens. This is a challenging existence in Brazil, particularly in Rio. You essentially work day and night. My dream, however, was sustained by that yellow taxi. Bruce Guimarães. After that, I spoke with my father and told him the truth. He was exerting too much pressure on me while I was playing, so I begged him to stop. Sometimes it's too much when your hero is pushing you. Thank God, my father handled it incredibly well. After that, everything was different. Hey, it's football, I would tell myself while I played. Just act as if we are scoring goals with flip-flops. After that, I overcame my block and really advanced. But even so, my journey was not the tale of a superstar. I tried out for Botafogo and Fluminense when I was 11 and 12 but was rejected. I wasn't wanted by them. At Fluminense, I lasted a full year, taking the two-hour bus ride after school before they fired me. I guess I only made it through three or four training sessions at Botafogo before they said, no thanks. When you're young, hearing a rejection like that may be devastating. I often wanted to give up. Thankfully, though, every time I felt like giving up, my mother would tell me the story of Cafu and how every club rejected him, telling me, you know what your dream is. She changed from being my worst critic to wanting me to be a little swimmer. She has always had faith in me. Thus, I persisted. Bruno Guimarães is to be thanked for this. Thanks to the same coach, Mario Jorge, who hired me at Audax Rio without even an audition, I shifted to defensive midfield when I was 13 years old. Sometimes, angels enter your life. I was given the opportunity to relocate to Wadax, Sao Paulo just before I reached 15 years old. Although I had to leave my family and live alone, it was a tremendous chance. I'll never forget the five-hour trip my parents took me on in my father's yellow taxi to Sao Paulo. They abandoned their only child in an unfamiliar city, in a claustrophobic dorm room with 18 bunk beds, and with a group of kids he didn't know. The first night, I sobbed. After that, I sobbed at night. Sincerely, a number of us shed many tears. The youngsters would turn to face the wall every night as the lights went out, and you could hear them sobbing. You miss your dog, your bed, and the smell of your own house at that age. Additionally, the living situation is not ideal. My journey was hardly the tale of a superstar. Bruce Guimarães. I won't forget this particular incident before I pass away. When I moved out of the house, my parents bought me a cheap smartphone, which I always hid under my pillow before leaving for training. I would retrieve it from under the pillow when I got home and hear if anyone had phoned. I get ready for bed, leap up into my top bunk, and put my hand beneath the pillow one night after arriving late from training. But I sense something as opposed to a plastic phone. Furry. But not cute, like. No, bro, not that sort of cute Harry. The disgusting kind of hairy. Then a tail was felt. I felt a tail right on my life. If only you could have heard my screams, bro. Yo, what are you doing in my bed? The chubby little rat is asking me. It wasn't even a tiny rat, no. It was large. It appeared as though it had been consuming protein shakes. I jumped from the bunk so quickly that I bumped my head on the post. The rat continues to scurry around the room, and some of the males start to leap up on chairs and try to chase it with boots. Everything sort of settles down when they put it in the closet, and I'm sitting on the side of the bed saying, bro, I can't sleep here. I need a new bed. Any bed. Who then enters the room with a strut? Another two rats. Everyone can be heard yelling a a a a a a Miradea. They entered with the air of masters. Not even fear existed in them. Ha ha ha. I recall lying awake that night and thinking, I'm in hell, bro, I wouldn't even put my head on the pillow for something like a week. The Players' Tribune slash Sam Robles. I'm not lying. There were a few occasions when my suitcases were prepared. I once contacted my mother and requested money for a bus ticket home over the phone. Her voice may be heard saying, remain calm. We'll both be there in a short while. 
Your dream is this. What you desire is this.